everyone, this is Helena Hart, and I'm here with my friend and fellow coach, Adrian Everhart, again today. And we've just been getting so many questions in the comment sections of some of our videos from women who are suspecting that their man might have Asperger's or something similar to that on that spectrum. You know, some of them are just attracting this type of man over and over, and some have been with a man for years in long-term relationships, and they're having a hard time relating to them and aren't sure what to do to bring them close and really connect with them on a romantic level. And Adrian knows so much about this topic, so let's just jump right in. Adrian, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Hi, Helena. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. Uh, if anyone has seen any of your previous videos, they know by now I was absolutely attracted to men that were a little bit different. I was attracted to men who had depression or bipolar. And my first husband, who I have talked about very much in my videos, loved him very, very much. But he was somewhere uh, on, you know, suffering with Asperger's, and which is really something that is. Uh, you know, high functioning on the uh, autism spectrum. So we want to talk about this as delicately as we can, but many women out there are married to a man who is diagnosed with Asperger's or they perhaps suspect it. So we really want to talk about this a little bit today and what you can do. It can be a really difficult thing to have with a, a relationship where you're building warmth and intimacy Something as simple as a hug can become very difficult for someone who has Asperger's. So today we're here to, to talk more about that and share some tips with you all. Absolutely. And I know everything you're going to share here coming from your own personal experience is going to be so helpful for everyone. So what are some, I don't know if you want to go into the symptoms. Of course, we're not, you know, clinical psychologists or doctors here. So this isn't meant to like, you know, medically diagnose your man, but you know, just maybe some things that a woman could look out for if they're suspecting that they're with a man who has this going on. Well, the, in my particular situation, the first thing was eye contact. Uh, he didn't really want to make a lot of eye contact with me and the communication was different. And again, I liked different. Different was challenging. Normal relationships were boring to me. I was very much used to something very exciting and different. So again, normal love felt boring to me and I was looking for something that was a little more, uh, I don't know, I, I was unable to put my finger on it, but I liked guys that were different. So eye contact, communication is a little bit different. Facial expressions, a little bit on the awkward side, kind of clumsy, usually very intellectually or artistically gifted. So uh, my first husband, wow, he had a laser focus on certain topics. In fact, he became the first senior executive, the youngest one in this company in their entire history. And this was a man who had a biology degree. And I'll just tell you, the job he was doing had nothing to do with biology. And so he was just so gifted. He was so amazing. He had, he made a great income for us, but something as simple as walking in the door on his way home, you know, coming home from work, walking in the door and giving me a hug was a very difficult thing for him to do. His hug would feel like you were pressing down marshmallows. <laughs> you know, he didn't know how much pressure to give on a hug. And for uh, guys with Asperger's, there's actually, or, or women, in fact, there's a actually a machine now that teaches them how hard to press to give a hug. So you can imagine when it came to intimacy and when it came to communication and all of the normal things a girl wants to have, it was much different with this man. Uh, I remember one night uh, he had, he was setting the table for dinner and he said, what do you want to drink? And I said, well, I think I'll have a glass of water. So I went to the bathroom, I washed up and I came back to the table and I had nothing to drink. And I said, where's my water? And he said, you said you were thinking that you wanted a glass of water. You didn't say you definitively wanted a glass of water. <laughs> so you can just imagine how frustrating my life, just normal communication was with this man. But, you know, just because a person is, uh, 
you know, high functioning on that autistic spectrum doesn't mean they aren't capable of having a completely normal and healthy relationship. It just means that you're going to have to learn a different set of tools in your toolbox. The amazing thing is, is that the very tools that Helena and I teach you will work. Whether your man has depression, bipolar, or any other quality, including something like autism or Asperger's, is that the rules don't really change. A man is a man. <laughs> you know, a man is a man no matter what's going on. So speaking to them from that place of them being the man and then fixing it and coming to them with your feelings is essential to do. Wow. I'm just like hanging on your every word over here because this is, yeah, something I don't have personal experience with, but I'm loving everything you're saying. I know this is going to be so helpful for so many women out there. So what would you, what would you have a woman do who's, who's maybe dating or in a relationship with someone who has some of these things going on for himself and, and she's feeling frustrated or feeling like maybe he isn't interested or doesn't like her? You know, but on some level, obviously she knows that he does. He just, you know, maybe has difficulties expressing it. What would you have a woman do in situations like that? As with any man, and especially with a man with Asperger's, you have to accept what you have. The author of The Four Agreements, Miguel Ruiz, he says, you cannot expect a cat to act like a dog, and you cannot expect a dog to act like a cat. And we are what we are. And you really have to love that person the way that they show up. And so often we want to change that person. We want that person to be more like us. So if you have fallen in love with a man who has Asperger's or you suspect it, no difference. You love that person the way they show up. But ultimately, if this is the life for you, that's for you to decide. If you're not getting enough love, cuddles, texts, and attention, it's up for you to decide if you want to be in that relationship or not. You can't really force that person to be who you need in a relationship. Now, you can give them lots of opportunities to lean forward and step in and get activated into that masculine energy. And you do so by being warm, letting the man know how good something does feel inside of your body when he does do something you like, instead of criticizing him. So for example, when my husband would come home and give me a hug, I had to just sort of lean into him and drop into him and let him hold my weight. So he learned how to give me a hug and really hold on to me the way that I wanted to be hugged, you see. And then I would have to follow up with something really positive, like, mm, your hugs feel so good or your arms feel so warm. And so the man realizes, aha, I just made a woman feel really good. And then they'll have a tendency to keep repeating things like that. I love everything. All those examples you just gave. Now we always talk about just in, you know, normal, regular dating situations, um, you know, appreciation and acknowledgement, letting a man know how good something feels. I would imagine in this case, it, you would almost have to amplify that a little more. I mean, do I have that right? Or is there a different way a woman should go about it? I think amplification is a great way to say it. You have to reinforce it quite often. Reinforce, that's, yeah. Yeah, in every possible scenario. But ladies, again, we want you to do this with your men anyway. <laughs> we really do. I don't think a man uh, will ever say, hey, stop telling me I make you feel good. You know, I really don't think that that's going to happen. Do you, Helena? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this is actually helpful information for, you know, any anyone who's wanting to bring a man closer and inspire him to really want to meet your needs. Adrienne, for those of you who don't know, is also an expert on what to say to a man. She has an amazing ebook called 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. Let's say some need isn't getting met, maybe, you know, with sex and intimacy or affection or communication. Are there specific things you would have a woman say, or maybe a template of, of how to express some of her needs if she's in one of these situations? Well, so much of this depends on whether you're just dating or you're in a relationship. When you're just dating, a lot of what you're doing is you're just trying that guy out. He's auditioning for you. You're trying to figure out if this is going to fit into your life. So I really don't recommend making too many complaints at that point. But if you decide you do like this man and you want to keep going and the two of you are in a relationship, you know, you can let him know anytime he does something positive that this feels good. Okay. So we've discussed that. 
But the other thing is, is if that it's been weeks and you guys haven't had sex, for example, or he is suddenly weird about touching you or he's not coming forth, you can let him know, you know, it feels really good being in this relationship with you. And it feels so good when we're close and making each other feel good. And what can I say? I miss that. You know, I miss connecting with you. I miss feeling close to you. And you're coming to him from a place of this is what I'm feeling instead of like, why haven't you made love to me in the past month? What's going on with you? Instead of accusing him, you're just coming to him and saying, you know, I miss this and it feels so good when we do it. The strongest thing you can say to a man is, I want to fix this. Will you let me know how we can fix this? What do you think? And you come to him and say, I want to fix it. How, she, how can we fix it? What do you think we should do? You get him activated. I mean, don't you think that's a good way to activate a man into his masculine energy? Totally, totally. Yeah, the, the template I always give very similar is, you know, how, express how you're feeling. And, you know, what do you think? Or I love what you said, you know, what can we do to work this out, right? What can we do to work this out so both of our needs get met or so that we both feel good? Because that's inviting him into his masculine energy to help solve the problem. Right. And just, you know, men, typical men, they, I've found, they feel much more invested in meeting your needs or doing something differently. If they feel like they helped come up with a solution, right. Rather than some, they're just doing something because they feel it's an obligation and you're going to get mad if they don't. Do you feel the difference there? Helena, you say it better than anyone let it be his idea. <laughs> let it be his idea. That's one of yours. And it's really just so true. If the man feels like it's his idea and he's solved it and he's fixed it, he'll have his head up high, his shoulders back. He'll feel really good about himself. And that's what we want to do. We're not placating, but yeah, if you can have the opportunity to go ahead and let him have that in that moment, if it helps him and it helps you, then you do it. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, yeah, sure. A man might do what you want for a little while, but he's not going to keep that going forever. You can pretty much guarantee that's where we hear from women where, well, he stepped up for a week or two and now things just slid right back into their default setting, how things were before. So a man really needs to feel that he's invested, that the two of you are kind of you know, uh, looking at this problem together, not, he's not good enough. He's not doing enough. So you're telling him what he should be doing. Very dangerous dynamic. You don't want to step into that territory, right, Adrian? Yeah. I tell everyone men do not marry their moms or their therapists. They marry their hot, sexy girlfriend. And you want to be the hot, sexy girlfriend, not the mom, not the therapist. <laughs> I love that. It's really important. What you said too, is when you're just dating a man, you want to be watching him a little more dispassionately. I can't tell you how many women I hear from. And I get this, this tendency to like, you know, a, a guy shows up, it's been two or three dates or maybe just a couple of weeks and immediately she wants to steer things in a certain direction rather than just watching what he has to offer, watching what he's doing and seeing how that makes you feel. And I imagine that would be super important in a situation like this, right? Yeah. Instead of just saying, you know, I've got to make this square peg fit into this round hole just, it's going to be a square peg. A dog is a dog. A cat is a cat. They have very differently. And you have the option, the wonderful option to figure out what you want. You are not living in a world of scarcity. There are a lot of men out there. When you raise your vibration to believing that there are a lot more options for you, suddenly they will begin to appear. They really, truly do. One of the things we talk about with raising your vibration is in finally keep the one and heartbroken happily ever after. These are two stellar programs that Helena and I created. And we had a group of women in the class with us. I really encourage you to not miss out on these. Take a moment and click that link below and check them out. Helena, did you have more to say about raising your vibration and really getting into this mindset of abundance versus scarcity? Oh gosh, I have so much to say on that. Yeah, it probably is a topic for another video, but yeah, for the purposes of this topic, absolutely. Getting laser focus on a man, especially on what he's not doing for you, what you wish he would do better. It's just, it, you get so like zoomed in 
So you can zoom out a little bit and get a bigger view, especially if you're just dating this man. It's, you know, it's one thing if you've been married to him for 20, 30 years and you have kids and a home. Um, if you're just dating a man, you, you want to zoom out and really watch what he's doing and see if that's going to work for you. That'll work in any dating scenario. Very, very important. Adrian, I'd love to hear, because uh, I, ha I do get questions from women who have, are in long-term relationships or married with children um, with men with Asperger's. Do you have any like last tips for women in that situation where they want to stick in there, they want to give this relationship its best shot of working out? Uh, for sure. And I love what you talked about zooming out. Uh, I think in this day and age with technology where we can zoom in and pinch and zoom out, that's a really great way to say it. But my last little word of advice is just remember to be empathetic to this, you know, your partner. No one asked to have these things happen to them or to be autistic or have Asperger's or learning disability. No one asks for that. So you're, you know, you being empathetic, you being generous with your emotion and, and you know, making sure that you're not doing anything that's going to hurt their feelings and really uh, make the situation worse is just imperative. It's the most important thing you can do. And it requires, I know, so much patience, so much love and care. And uh, for any of you that are parents, you understand what I'm talking about here. So I just want to remind you all that feminine energy is really a slowed down energy. And if you can slow down your breathing, you can slow down your reactions, and you can treat the people around you with a lot more love and respect and have some wonderful things happen because of that. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Thank you so much. I would love to hear from you too. Type your experiences with this if you have any in the comments section. You'll start to see how common of a thing this really is. And just feeling that you're not alone in this can be really, really helpful. Uh, for those of you interested in our programs, Heartbroken to Happily Ever After and Find and Keep the One Without Coming Undone. You can bundle them together now at a special sale price. So I'll post the links to that in the description right below this video. Again, we love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We love being your personal guides. And we really do read all the comments, you know, as you know now, and we use that to create new videos and new content to really help you out no matter where you're at in your love life. So thank you, Adrian, so much again, and I will talk with you soon.